Today's episode is sponsored by Logan Arch. Logan Arch is my favorite place to do some nerdy and nostalgic shopping. They have everything from notebooks to pillows to enamel pins, and they cover current fandoms as well as geeky things from our childhood. My personal favorite is the Problematic Space Boyfriend Collection. To check them out, go to loganarchchicago.com and follow them all over the internet at Logan Arch Chicago. Before today's episode, we want to take a second to thank a couple of our Patreon supporters. If you don't know this already, Patreon is the way that we keep things going at the Sartorial Geek. It helps us do things like pay for the microphone that we use to record this podcast and hosting and keep our website running and pay some of our writers. So this week, we want to thank Megan, Rachel, Holly Ann, Elizabeth, Amy, and Brenda. We appreciate you so much. And if you want to join them, you can head to patreon.com slash sartorial geek and choose any reward you would like. Hey, welcome to the Sartorial Geek Podcast. I'm Jordan Denae, and I'm here with Markisan Nasso. Hi, how are you? Hi, Jordan. Thanks for having me on the podcast. I'm doing great. I'm so jealous of where you are right now, which is Hawaii. That is just so amazing. It is a pretty fantastic place to be, especially in a pandemic. Yeah, I've heard a lot of stories of people trying to get beautiful places like that. So I'm very jealous that you are just there already. (laughs) I mean, I'm looking out at the ocean right now because my office overlooks the ocean in Honolulu. And, you know, we can go on different hikes and go to the beach. And there's just not as many cases here for COVID as other places. So it definitely feels like a, a place away from troubles. I like that. Yeah, what a great thing. And also as a creative, you're a comics creator. And like, I feel like one of the hardest things about the past year for a lot of creatives has been just focusing (laughs) and having any creative (laughs) energy. Not that I'm sure it was like magically perfectly easy for you, but that's very, very cool. Well, actually, you know, it was easy for me because I've been a freelancer a long time. So I'm just, I'm kind of used to it, setting my own schedule and just being able to focus on projects. It actually wasn't too much difference, you know. I mean, I don't like people dying. I actually had an aunt who passed away from COVID, which is horrible. But as far as like uh, working and, you know, my state of mind hasn't really changed much. It might have actually been more productive uh, for me during the pandemic. Yeah, without all the extra stuff <laughs> to think about. Yeah. Worry about. And uh, we were just saying before we hit recording, like there, it's a very exciting time where like creative projects are are happening again and you know things are getting picked up and it feels like the world is returning to normal a little bit. So can you tell the listeners a little bit about like what projects you're working on now and what you've been up to? Oh yeah. So I mean uh, right now my main focus is uh, by the horns. It's a new comic book series I have uh, coming out from Scout. The first issue's out. Second issue is dropping on uh, March 26th and uh, we're actually fortunate enough to go to second print sold out of the the first issue. So second print comes out this week on the 19th. It's basically the last unicorn meets Kill Bill. I love that so much. <laughs> Pretty good, right? Yes. Should I just stop there? Should I talk about the rest? Okay. No, keep going, but that's a perfect... <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's a sci-fi fantasy action series about a hunter named Elodie who wants to kill all the unicorns on the continent of Solithus for trampling her husband. The problem is that it's impossible to find unicorns. So Elodie just starts murdering anything out there with a horn in frustration. Unfortunately, all the monster hunting affects her standing in the farming village of Wayfair where she lives. So the elders exile her for neglecting to help the community. So she sets out with her uh, telepathic half-wolf, half-deer friend, Sajin, to try and make uh, one last go at tracking down unicorns and getting revenge. But then they uh, end up discovering that there's an even greater threat out there than unicorns. So the series is about stabbing horned monsters, but it's also about this woman who feels like all she has left in life is revenge. She has to decide what's more important, getting back at all the unicorns at all costs or standing up for the larger community and stopping a a massive looming threat to the entire continent and all the creatures on it. I can't wait to read this. That sounds like everything I want to read. (laughs) That's so great. (laughs) And it's beautiful too. Yeah, I'm looking at I'm looking at all the covers on your site right now. It's gorgeous. Oh yeah. I mean the art team, Jason Muir and Andre Tabakaru or Tabakaru. I never know how to pronounce his name actually. He's Romanian. 
he's a vegetarian who like lives in the forest and I don't know how we found him, but that's amazing. <laughs> they worked on first series Voracious for Action Lab, which is about a chef who travels through time, kills dinosaurs and serves them at a restaurant in the present. So Jason's been a friend of mine for a while and uh, Voracious was our first comic. And so now we've moved on to, to this new book and brought the entire team. Andre also colored it. They've leveled up. They always level up, I think, from issue to issue. But I mean, if you look at the old Voracious stuff and look at the new By the Horn stuff, it's just phenomenal how they've progressed and just delights me every time it hits my inbox. That's so fun, too, that your stories contain like such fun creatures to draw, I'm sure. Like, yeah. I mean, a comic full of unicorns and monsters. That's like the <laughs> dream, I think. Yeah, it's funny because I was just thinking about that. Like in By the Horns, most of the characters are anthropomorphic. Elodie is human, but, uh, you know, there's sage in, there's unicorns. We have a, a floating eyeball butler that comes into it. I love that. So, you know, and then all of the the baddies are, there's some kind of creature, some kind of uh, creature, humanoid creatures. So I didn't really think about that when I was doing it, but um, it is pretty fun to have a cast like that. You're the writer. Like, we don't have to talk about art <laughs> the whole time, but I feel like, I mean, I'm not an artist, but <laughs> I feel like that's so fun. They're the, I mean, they're the stars. I don't know why those guys aren't illustrating X-Men. They're just slumming it with me. They should be doing like a bigger <laughs> book. So happy to talk about art. I feel like even just looking at the covers, like you really get the vibe of the story, which is so cool. Jason and I work, work really closely together on our projects. I think it's a little different than other creators because we're friends and, you know, I have the story idea, but I bring it to him and then we talk about the story and he'll see what he likes to draw when we do character designs because we do all character designs and kind of the world building before I even write scripts so we can talk about them, know what they look like, what they're about, you know, how they interact with other people and creatures and things. We do all of that so that he's super invested in it. I'm super invested in it and we do it together. That's the best part of it, you know, having this friendship and then maybe I'll create something that's both of ours because we're very different people too. I'm like, I'm a big metalhead and Jason's like, uh, I'm more like an alternative kind of suburban kid. It's kind of funny that uh, I always want to do everything black. <laughs> <You know>? Right. <laughs> but if you look at the colors He's, and stuff. Yeah, it's not that no, at all. <laughs> right? So, I mean, LD's got black in her outfit. But yeah, you know, he likes the colorful things. And, and when we were doing this, we wanted to kind of bring that out in the world, just make it more vibrant. And it's just something that's not my normal sensibility. But when I get with him, it kind of changes. We want to make it a melding of the things that we love together. I love that. I know all comics are like collaborative in some way, unless I guess one person could do all of it. But I think that's really special. Not every comic is that collaborative. Like sometimes it's like, okay, I did my part. Here you go. Like I got the pitch, but this is like, you're actually building it together, which is, I imagine way more fun. In yeah, a lot of ways. It's fun. And you know, it's important, I think for me to do the book, because I want Jason to really love what he's doing. You know, I'm sure there's a lot of artists who will take on a book and maybe they're not as invested in it. And um, this way, you know, he's instrumental to creating the world. And he knows a lot of what, you know, what's going to be taking place. And I do surprise him sometimes in the scripts, of course, and things change when I'm writing. But, you know, I just felt like to make the best comic you should do together as a collaborative effort. So I think we'll always approach it that way. In fact, in, in the new series, By the Horns, I even wrote some Marvel-style pages. So there's some fights in it where normally I write full script and I'll lay out everything that happens in the fights. But Jason likes to do some choreographing too. So I left some empty pages where I'm like, here's the basic thing that happens here in the fight. And then you can do whatever you want with it. And so he's done that a couple times in the book. It's interesting because I like to be in control. I like to, uh, you know, write everything out myself, but I like checking my ego at the door and <laughs> him doing the same thing and just seeing what he's going to come up with because I trust him to do it and he trusts me to do my part. That's been fun. I was going to say that definitely takes a lot of trust, especially when you take your story. I know it is collaborative, but you're just like, okay, here's what has to happen. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it, so like the story starts in my head, of course, and I envision it. It's always going to be a little bit different in my head than how it comes out on paper. Because again, Jason has other ideas, like he'll interpret what I write. And most of the time, you know, it comes out better. And so I think about that when... uh 
Jason's like, oh, you think I could choreograph one of these fight scenes? I mean, yeah, I think you'd be able to do that really well because I've trusted you throughout Voracious and a lot of the issues that we've done with By the Horns. And you're going to bring something different and unique and it's going to surprise me. And that's pretty fun too, just to see something that, okay, I imagined it one way and I didn't even write it out. And now Jason's just going to come up with something else. So that's nice. Yeah, that's something that's so unique to comic writing versus, I mean, I guess any script, but so different from, you know, writing a novel or something, because if you have an editor, they go over things, but you still have control, like it's words on paper and comics are so much more than that. And like, you, I guess, yeah, really have to trust the artist to show, you know, the behind the scenes of the script, like you're giving them the facial expressions or like the things that need to happen. I didn't really think about it like that. Yeah, it's actually crystallized for me because I actually put out my very first pro story. It got published by uh, Outland Entertainment just last month. It's for this um, anthology book called uh, Apex World of Dinosaurs. That sounds awesome. It's cool. It's all different dinosaur stories. And there's like some really big award-winning writers in there. And there's like new writers like me, which is fun because you get a kind of a different styles. And um, mine is, uh, again, I guess I like this anthropomorphic dinosaur barbarian king in his final days. Yeah, it's called Two Megatherion. Yeah, it just came out. I mean, I've written some prose. I never really sat down to do a full story. And they contacted me because they had read uh, Voracious and they really liked that. And dinosaurs are a big part of that, of course. I said, you know what? I've always kind of wanted to try to write a novel or something. Writing a short story is a good way to see if it's something I even would enjoy. And I did, but it's very, very different than working on comic books, especially the way I work on my comic books with Jason. It's just such a, a close collaboration. This is just me holding up and just everything in my head's coming down on paper. And then I have to keep going back and retooling it, retooling it. And I didn't really bounce it off anybody. Sometimes authors will do that. It was more insular for me. I just wanted to write it and see how it would come out. And I did it freeform. I had the basic idea. Most of the time when I write comic books, I'll do detailed outlines and I do character sheets so I know like what the characters want, who they are, where they're going to go, so that when I'm writing each issue, I know exactly what I need to get in there to, to progress the characters. And this one, I just kind of had the basic idea and I wrote the introduction to it. And then I let that kind of guide me to where the rest of the story was going to go. And I knew the ending. It was a really cool exercise. I'm actually looking forward to doing more of it, but it was very, very different. That's really cool to be able to do both. Because yeah, I think, again, I'm not a writer, but it feels like two very different skill sets. So that's fun to like test it out and see the differences in both. And then to just be able to do both. That's really cool. And uh, you also mentioned being a metalhead. And that's like another, I guess, section of <laughs> things you do. Another <laughs> factor. I don't know what the right word is. Another creative yeah. outlet energy place. <laughs> You're doing metal things. I guess, I'm doing I'm metal things. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a, lot, <laughs> there's a lot of metal in the, by the horns. But yeah, no, I'm a big metalhead for since I was, you know, early teenager. Like you, I do a podcast and it's called the Metalheads Podcast. And uh, I started off as a guest on that show back in 2018. Uh, the boys on the cast, they, they put out a, a call for listeners to come on and just talk about metal with them because the fun part about being into metal, you know, like other things, is, is meeting new people who like that same music or, you know, like the same comics or whatever. So I wanted to meet people who liked headbanging because I don't have a lot of metal friends. I lived in Chicago for 20 years before I came out here to Hawaii, and I would mostly go to metal shows by myself because I just didn't have a lot of friends who were into metal. So it was really neat to go on that cast and, and, and talk with them about stuff. They interviewed me about Voracious at the time. So I made a real connection with them, and they just asked me to come back and do the top 25 metal albums with them because they do that every year. And that was a, a real honor for me uh, to do that. And then they just kept asking me to to come yes, back. Yes, I love that. <laughs> and so now I'm a, a full timer on that and we record every month and uh, we interview bands. We actually just interviewed um, an artist because uh, the cover art for metal albums is just is really important to metal. I mean, they're just the best covers. In fact, I got a metal cover artist to do a variant for By the Horns number one. That's the, um, the Scout website variant. It's a wraparound painted cover by this guy named Luke Orem. Yeah, so we just interviewed him on the Metalheads podcast. I'm like, we should interview some guys who do art. 
And he also has a comic book that he put out too as a part of a band called Wallowing. They did this comic book called Planet Loss and he drew the whole thing and it just came out. So yeah, I like how some of those things overlap, but uh, the Metalheads podcast, I feel like it's an essential part of me now. I, I need to have that conversation every month. I mean, I talk to the boys every single day, you know, just on chats or whatever, but doing the Metalheads podcast has been one of the best things I think I've ever done. I really enjoy podcasting. And I think that like, I mean, there haven't been shows in so long. I feel like things like that, like part of this podcast has been trying to take like to help foster the conversations that would normally happen at comic cons. And so I'm sure your podcast is similarly like helping keep that conversation alive that would be happening at shows that like hasn't really been able to happen for the past year. So I'm sure lots of listeners are finding a lot of value in that. Yeah, no, I mean, there's people that that say, hey, you know, your podcast really saved me. Like we had one guy who just wrote us and he's like, I'm a gay man who likes metal. A weird thing for me because it just doesn't seem like there's that many people who are gay and into metal. I really enjoy your podcast because I felt like you know, your friends that that I can listen to, like I'm there, like I can communicate with you and discuss the music I love so much. And that like touched me so much because not every fun thing, especially metal, is inclusive as it can be. You know, even me being a, a brown man, you know, you don't think of metal as traditionally being something where you know, people of color into. Of course, there's a lot of fans of that and there's a lot of musicians who look like me, but it's in the minority. No, but it's intimidating. So yeah, I just love that part of it where if you can do something that touches somebody, you know, that they find a real value to them, not just for their listening pleasure, but just, uh, you know, that helps them in their life. I mean, there's nothing better than that. Absolutely. And you said you went to a lot of shows alone and that's like very brave. Like a lot of people... I mean, me included, have a hard time doing things like going somewhere alone, especially in a space where you maybe feel like you're in the minority. So I feel like podcasts are a really nice way where you can connect, you know, from the comfort of your home. and You don't have to go out anywhere. And if you don't like it, you can turn it off. But if you do like it, you can subscribe and like find your network. Um, although I would encourage people to go out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do things. yeah. I mean, and not necessarily in crowds with the pandemic, but in general, because I'm very much a loner. I've always been a loner. And I had to kind of force myself to go out and be more um, outgoing and just try to meet more people. And, um, you know, this is a long time ago. So now I think I'm pretty good at it now. I've made a lot of friends and all that, but I always like being by myself for the most part. But I now I definitely find the value in just talking to other people and just communicating and sharing, you know, things in, in life that you enjoy. So, yeah, I love that. Are there any other projects or anything that you're working on that you want to make sure we talk about? I have some projects I can't announce yet. So no, it's mostly by the horns. I'd love for people to check that book out because like I said, the only the first issue's out. The second issue's coming out really soon. You know, it's going to be eight issues for the first season. We just got the green light to do more after that, which is really awesome because we have so many ideas for it. You know, we've done a lot of cool collaborations for the for this by the horns project. We made a, a mead for it, which is a, a honey wine. I love that. That's incredible. <laughs> Yeah, with Brimminghorn Meadery, those guys are great. And uh, that sold out, but we have plans to do something else. So yeah, stay tuned for that. And uh, we have an album out. Well, I guess I could talk about this quick. So when I do comic books, I kind of think like maybe it could be the last comic I ever do. I mean, that's a little dark. <laughs> no, I get it. No, I get it. <laughs> I'm very appreciative of the opportunity to be able to do something so creative. So when I do it, I really want to do it hard. I want to just go all out on it. So with Voracious, we kind of did that too. We did signings at like butcher shops and we had recipes in the back of every issue and we got like real chefs to contribute recipes. Oh, so cool. Yeah. And this for By the Horns, I love metal so much. I really wanted to do like a soundtrack for it. So I got a band uh, that I had met, uh, a guy named Keith D, who is the mastermind behind this band called Arctic Sleep. He had been on the Metalheads podcast and he really liked Voracious and we got to talking. So I ended up doing a soundtrack with him. It's two songs. And um, I came up with the titles for the songs. And uh, we talked about the book so that he could craft the songs. So they really went with the comic book, which I think is unusual. I mean, you've seen soundtracks before, but it's usually songs that already exist. These were made for By the Horns. So I pressed it on vinyl and uh, I started my own record company called Skull Fracture Records. 
So we did it on three different versions of vinyl, orange, blue, and purple. And um, But orange is almost sold out because that was like the Scout exclusive because that's their colors, you know? So then I just, I decided to start a company called Skull Fracture Records. And um, I put out another piece of music that's focused on uh, the story I told you about to Megatherion for the Dinosaur Anthology. I had another metal band to uh, record an instrumental song, almost like a theme song for the lead character. That's so cool. Yeah, it's great, man. And then there's a B-side to it too. And I and I put it on cassette because cassettes have been coming back. Of course, you can get this all digitally. And then I, so the record company is, it's a company dedicated to releasing music based on story and myth. So hopefully I get to do more. I did my stories for the first two because, you know, I know them in and out. Right. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> As I go along, hopefully if I do more with Skull Fracture Records, I can do other people's stories and collaborations and it's been really fun. God, that's so cool. I like saw that on your site. I don't know why I just didn't even like register what that is. That's so cool. <laughs> yeah. Skull Fracture is the name of my uh, company, my LLC. So it's the natural, it's like Skull Fracture Records sounds amazing. Yeah, it really does. <laughs> <laughs> and like, you're right. Like I've, I have seen soundtracks to stories before, but I don't think I know any that are like newly created songs that's very cool right i think the crow like like james obar's the crow like really early on back when that first came out they did a soundtrack and it may have been music that was created for it i'm not sure i've seen a lot of other like iron maiden has a comic and of course you know they have music but nothing created specifically for that comic yeah that way like that direction of the comic first and then soundtrack is is super cool yeah i mean people can check it out uh, skullfracturerecords.com and uh, you can buy it digitally and then uh, like i said we have the vinyl and there were um, it comes with a comic book so it has a the by the horns number 1 comes with that and it's a special cover just with the record the other one the anthology you can get the anthology with a cassette tape a, a red cassette tape signed book uh, or you can just get a, a black cassette and the band's ashen horde is the name of the band that did uh, the soundtrack for my uh, two megatherion story so yeah that's been really fun it's a lot of work but man it's so rewarding just to collaborate with people you really respect in different forms i love how you know, musicians and comic book creators are very similar the way that works because they have to collaborate with a band. So it's been interesting having conversations about how I create comics and how they create music and how they parallel. I really enjoy that. I love that. I think I love collaborations. That's my favorite thing to be a part of. And that's my favorite thing to talk about. And I haven't really like seen many projects that are this big, <laughs> like this type of collaboration with so many different pieces. That's so cool. Yeah. That's the thing. When I remember I was, I know you probably <laughs> want to end this earlier, but so no, <laughs> no, no. I just <laughs> forgot about this. And so I'm so glad you remember. <laughs> well, and that's the thing. So, you know, I would say, you know, growing up, I was more of an introvert and I, my dad is not, my dad is very much an extrovert. And so I learned from him how to, to go out and do that. And the thing that I realized is that there's so many people who have these awesome experiences and they have these awesome stories. And I want to know about that. You know, so even though maybe I just prefer that being by myself, there's a huge value in like knowing other people and knowing what their passions are because it feels you too. And you just like to see that creative energy in the world. That's like joining the Metalheads podcast, talking to Brimminghorn, talking to these bands. You know, now I've created not just partnerships and collaborations and awesome products, but really cool friendships that I, I know will endure until I'm really old. So to me, that's the most important thing. I love writing comics, but uh, the friendships I've made and just being in the same room with somebody or just talking to somebody about that passion and sharing that and putting that out into the world, is uh, that's the best part of it. That's a phenomenal feeling. And I think that's what matters in the end. Not even so much the end product, but how you get there with other people. I 100% agree with that. That is like exactly how I feel about every project yeah, I do. Awesome. So can relate. And that's well, so I'm glad awesome. that we're doing this together. <laughs> yeah, I know. I like, I love doing interviews because like more times than not, I leave with, you know, just kind of buzzing with creative energy. And that's definitely how I feel right now. It's been so lovely to talk to you and hear about all your projects and all your stories. And I'm glad that like, 
there's so many new things happening and uh, you have so many things on the horizon. That's so awesome. Yeah, no, it's fun. I'm a little older than normal comic book creator. So, uh, you know, I started a little late, but I'm glad I did. And I feel like everything's kind of coming together and uh, I couldn't be more pleased. Really excited about the future. Again, I feel like that has been a hard emotion to have <laughs> for a while. So I'm <laughs> glad like being excited for the future is a possibility for, you know, more people again. That's really great. So where can everyone follow you? Because like you said, you do have some projects you can't talk about yet. So if people want to make sure they don't miss them, where's the best place? The best place to go is my uh, website. It's marcasan.com, M-A-R-K-I-S-A-N. So you'll find links to Skull Fracture Records and there's there's lots of cool uh, samples of the comics and just a lot of links to cool stuff. But I'm also on uh, Twitter, Darth San and Darth Marcus on on Instagram. If you want to know more about uh, By the Horns, you can follow us on uh, social media there. Our handle uh, for all the platforms and social media is By the Horns Comic. And um, you can listen to the Metalheads podcast on your favorite podcast app or just go to metalheadspodcast.com to play the episodes and read some written features we've done. I've done a, a print interview series there called Ten Horns. It kind of focuses on up and coming bands with, with 10 questions. That people can check out too. A lot of cool stuff, but marcuson.com is the, the home base. That's awesome. Thank you so much. It was so lovely to meet you like this. And I hope maybe at a convention someday in the future. Oh, I'd we'll love to. Thanks, Jordan. Be at the same place. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening to our episode. If you want to hear more like this, you can subscribe to the Sartorial Geek Podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you want to help us out, you can leave us a rating or a review or head to patreon.com slash sartorialgeek. Thank you so much. Have a great day.